Hello, a week ago I bought an Instax Y300 instant film camera. It had a plastic lens. It had only two focus settings up close or really far away. I have no idea how many uh, apertures it had. Uh, but what I've been doing all week, and this is my third attempt, I've been trying to get a medium format lens onto this camera body. And here is the result. It's a Schneider Kreuznach or Kreuznach, I don't know how to say it. 105 Radionar uh, f 4.5 lens what it delivers instead of automatic focus or automatic non-focus automatic aperture and automatic shutter speed we have a front focusing element so you can decide what you're going to focus on and how you're going to do it we have full shutter control from bulb to 250 so in increments of one two five it's an old lens mind you and it runs a bit slow uh fuji instax film is at 800 uh but when i do light meter readings i uh, with this lens i've been uh taking light readings at uh 1000 iso uh if i service the lens maybe i would get uh, more accurate readings or uh, but right now it's a bit funky but i want to show you uh how the camera works i i tore it apart i took out the old lens barrel uh i mounted a whole uh, set of rings uh, actually they're not rings they're actually uv filters which i took out the filters and used them as spacer rings to get the lens the right distance away to the film plane now uh this piece here is the most interesting piece and was the solution to my problem, or one of the solutions to my problem, because I, I did three iterations of this camera. Uh, that's actually a lens hood, and it's only by chance that it fit over the barrel that's ins inserted into this camera, which is actually also an added piece, but I can show you uh, all that uh, as I go through the camera. But more importantly, uh, I thought uh, I would just show you how it works. Now. The original Instax Wide 300 camera does a lot of things when you turn it on and push a button. It, first of all, when you turn it on, it'll it'll take the original lens and barrel and and open the uh, lens protector, uh, push forward uh, the lens uh, barrel and of course the lens itself. And uh, when you press the shutter, it takes a light reading. It doesn't. I don't think it does anything in the autofocus department. I think it's fixed. There's only two settings you could. You used to be able to turn the knob and you can do a up close or, or really far away. That was about it. So it had two uh, uh, um, distance settings. Uh, but it would take a light reading and it was pretty accurate. Uh, pretty accurate, I would say. The camera no longer does that, obviously, because the, lens, the original lens is no longer there. There's no metering. I gutted the camera entirely. The only thing that works, this on off button no longer works. The only thing that works is the shutter release. And the shutter release is no longer a shutter release because this uh, lens obviously is a manual lens from medium format cam camera, my beloved Balda, Balda Lux. Uh, it was a six by nine originally, uh, but I'm, never, I'm not gonna shoot six by nine anymore. So uh, it just, it's just too much hassle. And that's why I've been gravitating towards Fuji Instax wide cameras. But the, so the shutter release here no longer does any of that stuff. Doesn't uh, it doesn't move the barrel forward. It doesn't take into light reading. All it does, and it's the simplest circuitry, and I have it on my um, my camera blog, the shutter goes click dot blogspot dot com. That's the shutter goes click dot blogspot dot com. I I'll show there. I can show you how I did the circuit, the circuits, uh, the wiring. But right now, I just want to show you uh, what it does with film when you press. The shutter release. So here we go. Uh, uh, half the function of the original Instax Wide 300 camera. So um, here we go. I'm just going to hit the shutter release. I'm going to count to five seconds. Watch and you'll see why. Oh my goodness. Somehow magically I took a picture. And this is obviously uh, previously exposed film. But you can see that this camera now functions as a uh, the ejection mode so we eject the film and it passes it through the motors which are being run by the same motor that runs the ejection and you can develop film so that's all i needed the camera to do because all the other function is in the lens we have a shutter release we have 
a shutter setting, shutter speed setting. We can control the focus right here. And with this dial, we can control the aperture. Um, there are a few problems when you gut an entire camera and uh, take it apart uh, the way I did. Uh, you can get all sorts of light leaks in here, okay? Uh, so I've been chasing down one light leak. I think I may have solved it, but uh, I'm gonna give a test right now. I'm actually gonna load it with actual film. I've already preset the, um, the focus. And what I'm gonna do is take a light reading and in a second we'll take a shot with it. So uh, just give me a second. All right, I did that right? Okay, it's different when you try to do it in front of a camera. Um, all right, so remember, the only thing the shutter release does here is uh, operate the ejector and the rollers. So of course there's a dark slide in this film set, so we're gonna, we're gonna do, get rid of the dark slide. Remember, there may be problems with light leaks, so this picture will not be perfect, but I wanted to show you it in action. So uh, let's get rid of the dark slide. It's around a five second count. That's what I usually count. And uh, it, 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 it's pretty accurate. Uh, I've never had a double ejection. I've never put two pieces of film out and, and the ejector's never gotten in the way of the film. So I think it's a pretty fine way of doing it. You just guess and uh, other people have done it online and there's just no problem with it. So what I'm gonna do now is if it is leaking, it's probably contaminating the film right now and leaking all over and creating these white streaks. I'm gonna put a shutter release cable onto it. I'm gonna. Put the camera right underneath this camera here. You're not going to see it. It's going to come out of the shot, but you will, I promise, uh, uh, you will see the whole rigmarole of, um, of it developing so that you can see that it's bonafide. So I got a cable. I've already measured out the uh, distance at three and a half, maybe a bit less actually, it's more like four inches. So we'll roll it back and set it up and hopefully it'll take a picture of my ugly mug. Uh, not that, uh, Nothing to, you know, uh, brag about there, obviously, but, um, let me see if I can adjust this. So can just get this, it's not so, yeah, it's a bit funny. Let's see if we can put it on top of this so it doesn't roll over. Okay, so we may get a shot of me uh, here. I'm gonna have cocked it, I believe. Who knows, I may have forgotten. Uh, but let's take a shot and see how it develops and see, I mean, I think it's at the right distance. I measured it with the measuring tape. So here goes nothing. You heard the shutter release. Okie dokie. And now uh, we're gonna get it developing just in case there are light leaks. So one, two, three, four, five. So uh, why don't I leave this right here? That's a very exciting way of doing it. In front of my Vito B, that is another uh, busted up camera. It's not busted up, it's just got a lousy lens on it right now. It's got some hazing or crazy. Either it's glue or gunk uh, in it. Um, that'll be my next project is to learn how to clean uh, out a lens if it's possible. I'm hoping it's just fungus or something because I think you can get rid of that. Uh, okay, so right now, if it's leaking light, uh, it's leaking onto the next bit of film and you'll see streaks on it, right? Uh, can't be helped yet, and especially now that I've loaded film into it. I could throw it into a dark bag. I could throw it into a dark bag and put this dark side in and then look for the light leak, which I very uh, well may do. But uh, there you go, it's developing. Uh, here's the thing, why did I do it? Uh, there are lots of modified Instax Wide 300 cameras uh, online, but they don't necessarily show you how it was done. Uh, I've been trying to show you at my blog, the shutter goes click dot .com, in my haphazard way. Uh, I will show you how I assembled um, the barrel and insert and, and had it attached to this lens hood and, and then these reverse filters without the filters in them. Uh, then I had to cut a, like a lens board, the equivalent of a lens board and insert it into the last filter and then mount this thing. Uh, I mean, there are all sorts of opportunities for light leaks. Uh, it even may be leaking light from the circuitry and panel bits that used to go here, like the, the LED for, I don't know, when, when it charged the camera. I don't, uh, and this was an LED for a film count. I just obviously keep counting in my head. Uh, but if you go to my blog soon, not yet, I will take this camera apart uh, shot by shot 
uh, and you can see all the elements. So I'll at least give you, you won't have to do three iterations of the camera. Uh, you'll be able to find commonly available parts, nothing terribly exotic. Probably the most expensive thing uh, in the whole project will be sacrificing or finding a lens hood. This is, I didn't have to alter this lens hood. I'm very lucky. It's a, it's a, it's just a great a Hoya lens hood. And you're going to have to find some way of attaching this assembly to the rest of the camera. And so I'll show you what I did. I actually had to take apart a zoom lens. I hope you have a better way of doing it. Check it out. The shutter goes click dot blogspot dot com. Uh, I'll show you all that. Oh, how's the picture going? a bit you know it's a bit of that glare that's a classic fuji film thing but there you go um uh, i'm not even sure what's in focus you know maybe you can tell i'll have to turn it around and look at it myself you got yeah you know i'm showing you not me uh but there you can see and hopefully the the few objects that you see on the table will give you an indication of the depth of field and which you could never get mind you you could never get that depth of field uh with the original lens because it only has i believe one aperture setting maybe two uh, i could look at the stats and I'll, I'll put them uh on the explainer uh for this video but there you go uh have fun i spent too much money trying to do this i'm going to try to save you money i mean i bought chisels i bought chunks of wood i bought like uh circular drill bits to cut out uh, discs so that I could have create spacers. And in the end, I found two filters and a lens hood that did the trick. So uh, I'll show you images of that and maybe I'll cut them in so you can see the iterations of the attempts to get this right. One of the most important things is trying to get the focal plane distance because the lens is set to be sharp at a certain distance so that you can get infinity focus. And it's still, I'm still trying to adjust it because I don't know if this is terribly sharp. You can see the light leak, so it is leaking light somewhere. So that's two things I gotta do is adjust the camera so that it um, can be truly infinity focused. I thought it was, uh, there are some in, uh, problems with that. So I'll be working on that next. Uh, and then I'll be hunting down light leaks. Uh, have fun, don't waste as much money as I have trying to do this. It's nearly, it's really worth it though. It's really great fun. So have fun hacking your camera. Have a great day.